Okay, so I stayed up super late watching the second last episode of Game of Thrones. Second last? Third last? I don't know. It's definitely coming to a head. But, uh, cause you gotta do Game of Thrones anything on Tuesdays, cause Wednesday's too late, but Monday is spoilers for people that have PVR'd it from Sunday. So this is the sweet spot for Game of Thrones. This will contain spoilers if you haven't watched it, so wait and come back after that. Cause, um, I don't think anybody can say they really liked this last episode. I mean, it was all fire and destruction and horror and death and a very realistic depiction of massive warfare. And uh, this is the closest I feel like the series has gotten to uh, George R. R. Martin's sort of original, like historically accurate epic fantasy um, in that it, it does really draw from historical accounts of things like the bombing of London, you know, going back to the sacking of various cities. The, they, they didn't stop. They didn't just let people surrender and go about their way. They raised it. And a lot of people were very shocked by Daenerys' turn. I, I think the fact that she had all those people strung up by the road back in Marine back in the day was a pretty big indicator of if she's pushed, that's the way she goes. And this is where I start feeling conflicted. It was definitely a showdown between her and Cersei. And yet it wasn't. She's more of sort of a force instead of it being a direct thing they've never met that it, it, it is an army facing an army or an army facing a city and I I'm sort of not feeling the oh she's a Targaryen therefore she's crazy I didn't take that from this I took the fact that she's angry she's angry at what's been done to her the pointlessness of it it's a little disappointing that the end of the day all Daenerys wants to be is loved and if she can't be loved she's feared and Cersei's like at the end of the day just kind of a frightened little girl that only wants her her brother slash you know baby father um but I guess I shouldn't be surprised because all along I've been saying that George R. R. Martin doesn't really know how to write women, and those are very derivative motivations. Um, it almost says something completely brilliant about what rape cultures do to the women in them. But, you know, not every woman who is the victim of a of a rape culture and by that I mean like the mass rapes that happened in the former Yugoslavia or you know the mass rapes that happened during World War II or after World War II during Russian occupation of Eastern Europe things like that you know those women didn't become murdering psychopaths with a, a lack of capacity for empathy it just it didn't happen that way and so, well, it seems very close to being a a bold move that way and how it is a very, very in your face uh, metaphor for the anger that that women feel after, you know, multiple sexual assaults. It's too broad and too on the nose to really say something truly brilliant about it just because it's a bunch of guys and one female writer who did not write this episode I don't believe um saying something about women's state of mind after something they cannot um relate to and so it, it did fall flat in that regard now was it visually stunning sure um but it it definitely did feel like sort of a male take on what they would do in in that situation um and yeah you know Daenerys bought the whole Khaleesi thing at the end of the day one could say that that's the Dothraki coming out in her and I have kind of an issue 
with that because the whole savage deal of, you know, all the 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 non-white races in Game of Thrones suddenly start slaughtering innocents at the end because they're angry. Like, that's kind of a, an unfortunate byproduct of what was going on. And of course, there's Jon Snow, the, the great... I almost called him the great white savior, but that's kind of a loaded term. But he is certainly being set up as the, you know, righteous, righteous white man who sees more than the women folk and the, the people of color, what's going on. Um, that's a, I, I'm gonna hold off on that for sure until the final episode, because who knows what's going to happen. I, I disagree with the people online that say that it was shock for the sake of shock. I am not surprised. Um, Daenerys burned down the whole city. Um, when you consider she um, lost two of the people she'd known the absolute longest, um a lot of people feel the desire to burn it all down. They just don't have the power. I did find um, Tyrion Lannister's assumptions very, very interesting. It was a, an interesting introspective into his character that he believes in mercy because his brother showed him mercy when they were children. And so he believes mercy is possible because he doesn't necessarily feel worthy of mercy. And yet his brother taught him that. Now, Jamie's not making any sense to me. It's just sort of, oh, he's got this weird fatal attraction thing going on with Cersei. I don't, I admit, I don't quite get that. It, it was a an interesting moment when Cersei suddenly allowed herself to be afraid when he was there. Uh, Lena Headley has said from the beginning that that's how she's been playing her, that she's actually secretly terrified the whole time. So, you know, she's been playing that consistent. Um, as disappointing am I am, uh, disappointed as I am with the social messages going on, I thought her performance was spot on and consistent and good for her because... What a difficult character to add layers to. Um, that, I think, was a point of wisdom that she added that wasn't in the source material. So good for her, you know, good for her for understanding that character better than even perhaps the writers did. Um, they never quite explained why she just sort of let the whole city burn other than a massive miscalculation of it's never fallen so it won't. I don't know. That's a bit weak. The The whole thing seemed like a bunch of missteps to show um, the horrors of war. And, uh, you know, we're getting the Song of Ice and Fire now. We're getting, like... The ice last episode or the episode before that and the the fire now. So, okay, we have fulfilled the book title name. Um, but unlike previous moments this series, I did really feel like the original George R. R. Martin stamp was all over this episode just because of all the historical callbacks to horror, you know, uh, Eon Greyjoy continued to be the worst character on the entire series, like right to the assumed end. Oh my God, he was just a guy for Jamie to fight. It was, you know, a guy drunk with stories of glory and blah, 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 nothing terribly interesting about it. It was a, a last minute entry to move the plot along. The character was not good, never good. I feel really bad for that actor. Um, but, uh, Arya, that was an interesting turn and, um, it's kind of like an anti-Tolkien turn where one of the big things about 
J.R. Tolkien's writing is, is he really hammered the horrors of war and what it does to femininity and how women have to stop behaving like women gag me with a spoon. It was, he was a veteran of the first world war. He can be forgiven for some backward opinions in that regard, but this is the opposite. It was Arya reverted to being a little kind of, a little girl facing the horrors of war at ground level the same way she was the last time she was in King's Landing. Um, it's the opposite message, but no less sort of, um, again, very derivative. Um, the The characters, the writers really seem to be investing in are the guys the women are pulling um really great acting performances out of a collection of cliches um which you know all together um you know it's one of those things Kit Harrington still has really been given very little to do. And I feel really bad for him because maybe he's not a great actor, but I suspect that he's a better actor than this role allows him to be. And I, I hope he's able, I hope he's not typecast as a, like just a mopey guy and he's able to go on and, um, show what he can really do. Um, unlike, you know, Hayden Christensen, who kind of got zapped by the whole Anakin Skywalker thing. They haven't left enough time for us to really know Jon Snow. There isn't enough, there aren't enough episodes left for us to really figure out who this guy is, other than a guy who doesn't want any authority, but leadership keeps being bestowed upon him and it it makes him this sort of annoying caricature of all the stereotypes of white male privilege and that's frustrating because <sighs> Christ figures are a real crutch in fantasy um and he has been given so little to do beyond that that it's really quite frustrating. Um, he certainly does seem to have had a bunch of things handed to him, even though whenever he sort of takes command, it results in a horrible, like, slaughter, badly planned slaughter that they just kind of luck their way out of. And... If they'd isolated that he's lucky and that's not a bad thing to have, okay. But they're saying, no, he'll be just and he'll rule and all that stuff precisely because he doesn't want it. No, leadership takes some consciousness. And while, um, while it's true that often you don't want the person who wants to be in charge the most to be in charge... People do sort of have to grow into the role and John's not doing that. I mean, okay, yeah, he had that moment where he saved that woman from being raped by killing one of his own men. But that, again, was the decision of a soldier, not a leader. It's still left for the the ultimate, you know, is he going to defy Daenerys? Is he going to stop bowing and finally become king? Again, cliches. Um... Again, Tyrion Lannister continues to be the most nuanced, original, interesting character in the whole thing because he sort of defies what's expected of someone in a world that cruel. Now, I do give them credit for making the fact that the world is extremely cruel mean something, but other than the world is cruel and so it produces cruel people... They haven't left themselves a lot of time to really land on a message that isn't going to be, again, heavily reliant on cliches. So we'll see what they do. They might have some grand plan. They might manage to finally pull it out uh, and have a point. Uh, like I said, I, I do think this 
was the most obviously George R. R. Martin episode of this season because of the the historical callbacks, but they haven't left themselves a lot of time to tell a human story as a bo- as opposed to just showing a lot of carnage and violence. So we'll see what they do, but that's how I feel about it right now. And thanks for watching. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, because I don't have HBO budgets. Okay, thanks for watching.